Welcome back ladies and gents. In this video we're going to be looking at how you can create almost like a little workbook using Google's um, slide software, which is Google's version of PowerPoint. Um, so here's one I prepared earlier. And as you can see, there's a, a few slides and I'm not going to go through every single thing. I will highlight a couple of things um, just in case you don't know. But it is very similar to how PowerPoint uh, from Office uh, Suite, the Word, sorry, not the Word, the um, PowerPoint uh, version from Microsoft Office uh, uh, application is. Um, so I created this workbook, this PowerPoint or uh, a slide even using Google Slides. And the first page I've uh, pretended that is the, the the front page. So I've got a, a nice, simple, um, sensible image uh, relevant to the topic uh, at hand. I've put the title there, put down the name, and these are all uh, done through text boxes. So if you don't know what text boxes are or where they are, you go to insert, and then you choose text box and just drag it out and type it in. So obviously when the student opens up this up, they'll see the title, they know what the topic is, got an image there, makes it nice and simple. And when they click on here, they can simply go here and type in their name. Okay, and every single student in that class will be able to do the same thing. They'll have their own individual online ebook almost or online uh, work booklet. So that's what the front page looks like. Now you could also add uh, instructions in there if you want to, other details like class code and teacher name and you know the dates or whatever else that you'd like. But again, you just insert and you put in a text box. On the second page or slide, I put an image and just as an example of how you may be able to utilize this, I'm gonna drag this down a little bit just so you can see it a little bit better. And I'm gonna push this up. So you can see I've simply got an, an image uh, sticking to the theme for this example of the trenches um, and I've asked a question at the bottom here. Identify and explain four types to, for things you notice in the image um, that would be difficult for you to live in. Why do you think these living conditions could not be helped? So this is again a text box. Now you may notice there's a line going around it, a border. I simply just clicked here and at the top I believe this is a border color here and you can choose whatever color you like and that's just exactly how you how I changed it and again similar to the previous one I'm going to undo that um, students would obviously open this up they click here and go right and then basically start giving their answer as such okay so that's one way of having a question and answer this is an image that I found and you, this is another type of activity where you have, uh, you're asking the students to sort of fill in the gaps and it's a simple case of getting an image and then inserting a shape here. Uh, to insert a shape, I'm going to put this uh, little toolbar down so you can see it, so it's insert and you choose um, a shape and you choose a box and choose a shape that you'd like basically. So I, go, I typically went, uh, go for this and this is what I've done here and if I show you an example, I can just drag it out. Let's just say I want to uh, cover this one here choose a size that you want there you go and when students want to answer it just digit click into it and just type in the the answer it's as simple as that uh, so you can make these little boxes now obviously in this example uh, it's not the best because the answers if you know a smart student would say okay just move this out of the way oh there's the answer uh, but this is just for the purpose of this example here uh, you would obviously have one that doesn't have the answers behind it so you just put it in there and students can answer the question and look at the instructions are there dead easy simple for them to to follow through label and explain each element of this cross section to start all you have to do is click on the box and start typing yeah so i've made it clear for them to uh, to know exactly what they need to do so you got um a long uh, answer the question style question there you know written a, a, a question you've got a uh, fill the box uh, or missing blank exercise there as well now i'm going to show you some example of uh, some examples of how you may be able to introduce exam style practice or uh, exam style questions uh, as well so here's an example so you can actually uh, put a question here at the top as a as a title almost with the mark scheme there and then you have them to uh, answer a question on one side, uh, so their first response will go there. And this is just an example of how you can have them do a do it again better uh, exercise. So they put the answer in there first, you then mark it, and then they 
improve the answer in here. Now, what the reason why this is useful is, is because in here I've already made it green, as you can see. And this is how you change it. We're using the A to the text color tool here, which means when they answer in here, so if I click on side here and we put the first answer and blah, 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 you can then give them some feedback. And in case you're wondering, if you haven't seen the previous video on the Word document, the Google Doc uh, file where I show you how to give them feedback, you click on the edge, you click on this button here and you click comment. And a little speech bubble pops up and you say something. So you give them feedback here. If I can click the right letters, there we go. And you click comment. They then see the feedback and can reply to it there. But then they will obviously be given the opportunity to green pen their work on this side. So we can clearly show progression the development of answers and feedback being introduced. Now this feedback tool is available on any part of a Google slide. So it's the same thing here. So if they've answered something here, you can just click on this and click on that button there and click on comment and you can tell them if this is correct or not. Um, same thing as the answers here as well. Okay. So that's another example of how you can give them an exam style question. And again, if you haven't noticed, um, these are just two um, test text boxes uh, similar to the previous slides. Here's another example. So you can give them a source, an image, another text box with the mark scheme. They go straight into here, they read the question, and then they answer it underneath. And again, you can give them feedback uh, as I described in the previous uh, slide. A last example, you can give them a um, a video if you want to, so you can put a link there, which when they click on it, it, it pops up. Uh, and then you put the questions underneath, and again, they can just go straight in and answer it. So there's plenty of different ways to create a workbook. So this could be something you do over a couple of lessons. And in fact, you could, I mean, I put this divider here, and this could easily be um, two different things. So I'm going to just copy this. See, right click, uh, what I've done is Control C, Control V on the keyboard, but you can just right click and duplicate slide. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this at the top here, and you could just say, um, I don't know, um, lesson one activities or tasks. And then this one could be lesson two tasks and lesson three tasks. And, and you can break up like that. That way students can work from home knowing exactly this is what I need to do for the first hour of the lesson, the week after that, week after that. And the beauty of this is that you could just make it once and then send it out and then that's it. You don't need to keep sending it every single week. It's just then. All you have to do is remind them you know, with you know, verbal prompts in the lesson. And this could be, as I said, exam preparation, homework booklet. It could be a... Um, what did I say, exam prep, uh, it could be um, any number of things. Um, once that's done, oh, let's see, I'm just going to copy this one here, Control-C, Control-V, and push this one down here, and it's going to be lesson two. Oh, there we go. Um, and that's that. Now, how do you actually send it to them. So this is how you make it. Now, if you haven't realized, I am on Google Slides here. If you don't know how to get to here, it's no different from Google Docs. So you go to your Google Drive, you go to New, and instead of going to Google Docs, you go to Google Slides and go to blank. And it's as simple as that. And then you'll be taken to something similar to this and you just build up your slides as you would do. If you already have one and you want to convert it, please see my previous video on how I transferred and converted my Google, my uh, Microsoft Word document into a Google Doc. It is the same process. The difference uh, would be, however, that you're looking for this icon rather than the orange P, which means PowerPoint, obviously from Word, so not Word, Microsoft. Um, so how do I send this to students? So I come over here, I go to Classwork, just like the previous uh, uh, activity, this assessment activity that I did two or three videos ago. I'll go to assignment, and then I'm gonna put something like, I don't know, uh, class. No, let's put, uh, I'm gonna put revision. Actually, no. Homework. Work. Homework. Um, Ebook. There we go. 
give the instructions if you need it. You don't. It's not necessary, but you can put it in there. Google Drive. It should remember the last thing you worked on. If not, you can search for it. The name's right there. But you know, it just so happens it does remember it this time, which is great. Click on Add. Very important this time. It's a workbook for every single student, so I want to make sure that they can get a copy each. So you click on this. Choose the class that you want. Do deadline, whatever. But to be honest, it's not the end of the world if you don't have that. But if you do want to assign a deadline for this homework to be done, then of course you choose that. Now, if you've done enough for three or four lessons and you have them once a week, you could easily set this for three weeks from now and then it's done. You don't have to keep going back to it. But if you are going to break it down, you'd have different slides for each one. So you could say, no, actually, I'm going to do only lesson one activities, then make another one for lesson two activities, another one for lesson three activities, which means you have three separate documents. That's completely fine. You can break it down as such and put lesson one here. And then the next one, you do lesson two, lesson three, lesson four. OK, once that's done, you click on the sign. And that's it. It's done. Dead easy. Now, obviously, depending on how big the file is, uh, that will dictate how long it takes for it to be actually assigned. But you'll see it here show up.